This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a review, a personal review of my experience with PlayStation Remote Play. So in the year 2023, we've got a lot of different companies now that are primarily gaming companies that are gearing towards cloud gaming or the idea that you have a server set up somewhere and then you're able to use a device to connect to the internet to connect to the server they'll be able to play games pretty much anywhere and PlayStation Remote Play takes a little bit of a different uh, angle on this. So PlayStation Remote Play is actually a little bit interesting. So instead of offering like a subscription service, like all these, you know, other companies with their various servers and whatnot, PlayStation Remote Play actually says, hey, you bought one of our consoles. Let's have it connect to your modem or your router. And then from there, it's able to beam over to other devices on your network. And even further, in some cases, they actually can take that information and beam it off to a satellite somewhere. So if you can actually, as the name suggests, remote play from a completely different location. So of course, the best result that I found is being in your own house when it comes to this kind of stuff. And PlayStation Remote Play, or rather Sony, specifically states when setting up PlayStation Remote Play that ideally you want to have your PlayStation in the same room as your router and then using the same internet connection that those two are communicating is where your third device connects into. So that being said, I've got a Netgear modem and a Netgear router. And as we click here, my internet speeds are eh, they're all right. I mean, I've got second or third from the top uh, tier for Xfinity's, um, I don't even know what you call it these days, their download speeds. So definitely not gigabit uh, internet. So in my mind, I feel like this is a more realistic what most consumers internet are going to look like. Yes, there are going to be outliers where yes, people will have gigabit internet. And yes, people will have probably an equivalent to DSL still. Why do you say DSL? I think it was more like dial up. <laughs> that being said, let's dive into the first product that I tried this with, and that was the Steam Deck. Weirdly enough, PlayStation Remote Play is not something you can get off of the Steam Deck natively. However, there's a third party app by the name of Chiaki. I'm not going to include a setup tutorial here because there are plenty of others around that do a much better job than I ever would. So just know that it is a little bit of a process. That's something that I found out firsthand is it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of time figuring out what are the best settings. So let us start up Chiaki here. Uh, as you can tell, we've got our PlayStation here uh, registered and ready to go, but I'll just quickly go here. These are some of the settings that I found to be the best. Yes, you can go into like different codecs or codices and you can adjust the frame rate and the resolution. I honestly don't care all that much about resolution and detail. I just want a smooth frame rate. And anytime the frames drop, I start to freak out a little bit. So no, this is not a perfect setup. You will have dropped frames. Um, this is just the best that I found that does not have as much dropped frames. So go to close and we'll go here. So I apologize ahead of time. The video quality of the camera that I've got is not ideal. Actually, the gameplay looks a little bit better than the camera quality. I only give it that. So as we're playing here, I'm going to have this weird kind of holding angle so my driving is going to be absolutely garbage so don't mind me but as you can tell already it's working pretty well i mean the no again my driving is subpar in this situation for the most part the frame rate as far as i can tell has not dropped the thing that i've noticed is you'll get a little bit of artifacting i guess we're kind of off into the distance or off into certain areas like They'll, you'll get like a cluster of static almost where it's just you'll lose some detail as 
remote play basically is converting your PlayStation HDMI output into a video stream that then sends over the internet. And that artifacting, I guess, is just from when it's struggling with connection a little bit. So like I said, video quality, honestly, is not too bad. I mean, yes, you can have higher resolution modes where it just really pops on the Steam Deck. But being able to play Gran Turismo 7 with a full 60 frames a second, I, uh, like, holy crap, man. This is just, I, I was blown away. But like I said, it took an absolute ton of work trying to get the settings really dialed in. So again, um, if you have a Steam Deck and you have a PlayStation 5 or even PlayStation 4 and you want to play Gran Turismo on the uh, Steam Deck, this is amazing. It really is game changing. And this actually brings me to a really interesting kind of idea where it's like I was saying before, you can do, you know, Microsoft's X Cloud Gaming. That that's originally how I played it well as well. And I had like an Xbox controller and you can actually connect them to your phone via Bluetooth. So I had played or tried the PlayStation Remote Play with a PlayStation 5 controller and there just seemed to be some input lag and then you suddenly need like a phone holder for the controller or some way to hold it up and it's just kind of odd so what we're doing today is actually a pseudo product review at the same time and that is the backbone and the backbone is a little device for apple uh, phones or iphones and has a little lightning connector here there are backbones that are also Android where they replace the lightning connector with a USB-C and you just plug it into your phone. Now, the thing that I tried to do is I had this very slim case here and I tried to plug it in and it just never really registered. So I actually went ahead and tried uh, cutting out a little part on the bottom so I could actually get it to connect because I saw right down in here there's like a little nubbin thing sticking out with the uh, lightning port and it just didn't work. So one downside of the backbone is 99.99% of the time you're going to have to use your phone without a case. It's not great, but uh, when you go to their website, they do show or at least show a list of supported uh, phone cases that are thin enough or are compatible i honestly haven't seen any of them um, at like target or office max or anything like that so it's kind of few and far between and yeah for a 20 dollars phone case you might as well just take it off use it with the backbone and call it a day so we'll get right into the playstation remote play here as you can tell there's actually a little light that pops up there uh, letting you know that it is connected there are again i've tried doing different controllers via bluetooth and it just drains the battery really quickly so having something that is just plugged in not over bluetooth in my mind is wonderful for the gaming experience and the cool thing is is that it actually includes a charging port through here so if you need to charge it you can just plug it into the backbone or the controller and charge your phone pretty neat so the same kind of thing uh camera quality is garbage so the backbone in my mind I've got a couple of gripes with it. All in all, if you're willing to spend $100 US for it, it works. However, it feels like, honestly, it's a device that you could probably produce for $30. So the fact that they're marking it up so much because of the Sony licensing is a little bit of a downside. The inter other interesting thing too is in my mind, because it is a smaller screen, it takes that same level of detail that you get with the Steam Deck and it actually is able to compact it more. So it looks like a higher quality screen. Honestly, it's probably running in like 720p. So it's probably a little bit higher anyway. The thing that I found very interesting though with this is that there are no settings for being able to change like the video stream for at least what I could tell. Uh, with the Steam Deck, as you could tell, you could change the different codices. You could change like the frame rate and the audio buffering and the bit rate and all that kind of fun stuff. And I appreciate having that level of control because, you know, depending on your internet connection, you might not be able to do the highest of everything. 
So with this, as the frame rate and the resolution are mostly great, you will have some decent frame drops pretty frequently when you're doing it on the phone. And again, as much as I'd like to be able to play with the settings to get rid of that so there's lesser frame drops, I mean, it kind of is what it is. The other interesting thing, too, is that when you get the backbone, they actually show like, hey, you know, thanks for you know buying a product, download their app. So you go to the app store to download it, thinking that it would be like, you know, button remapper or anything like that. And you look at the app and it's a subscription service. Kind of odd. So from what I could tell, for $2 a month or forever, it basically takes PlayStation Remote Play uh, the Xbox X Cloud, the GeForce Now, and originally the Google Stadia stuff, and it puts all the games into a nice looking library. That that was it from what I could tell. So you're paying two dollars a month for folders. So of course you can use the backbone without the app, without uh, paying two dollars a month, which is what we're witnessing here. It's just you plug the controller into your phone and that's it. So with that all being said, it is, it can be an expensive device. If you already have a PlayStation controller and you really don't want to spend any extra money than you already have, PlayStation Remote Play is free. So you can connect it over Bluetooth and it works but it's just you'll need like a phone holder and you'll need like a charging cable for it and it's, it's a whole process the really cool thing with the pc version of the playstation remote play is that because playstation controllers are well, at least playstation 4 and 5 are bluetooth you can actually connect them via bluetooth there i don't know if the playstation 5 yet has pc support but i know for a fact that you can connect via bluetooth your playstation 4 controller it works great the thing though is that if you don't have a playstation 4 controller for whatever reason and you don't want to play it on the pc or try to disconnect it from your console and then play it on pc there's going to be a kind of an interesting side effect. So the side effect is, is if you're trying to use, for instance, an Xbox controller on a PC, you're not going to get any input whatsoever. So you're like, well, what the heck? Well, obviously PlayStation is meant for PlayStation. So an Xbox controller playing a PlayStation remote play app isn't going to work. That being said, there is a solution. There is a website or an application called Rewast or R E W A S D where it actually you're able to change the inputs or the key mappings of any controller or any keyboard that you have where it tricks other programs into believing for instance if you're playing Halo that you know your PlayStation 4 controller is actually an Xbox controller so inversely, you can use Rewast to be able to edit the inputs of your Xbox controller to make it mimic a PlayStation controller. So the PlayStation Remote Play goes, oh, that's a PlayStation controller. That being said, it is quote unquote technically free. It's only like a seven free day trial. But then from there, it's only $7 for a forever license. So it is $7. That being said, and yes, there are additional features and things that you can, you know, add on to drive that total up. But the base, all you need of Rewest is $7. So here's kind of the setup here. The really cool thing with Rewest is when you open it up and you connect to your controller for the first time, Rewest is like, oh, this is just a Xbox controller. So let's just throw in the PlayStation inputs when you've got uh, the uh, PlayStation Remote Play app running and it just seamlessly works. It's like, boom, there you go. So if we open up our PlayStation Remote Play app on PC, there we are, we're in. So as we play this, Hopefully my driving will be better as I'm on a screen and I can actually see what I'm doing and the rest of that. It's it's weird because you should feel like 
you're committing something sacrilegious because you're playing Gran Turismo on an Xbox controller. But at the same time, it, like, works as well as you would expect because, you know, X is just square and A is just cross and, you know, your triggers are just your L2 and R2 and the rest of that. So, I mean, it's just, it works beautifully the thing that i've noticed though is that you don't get vibration when it comes to any of the remote plays which is if that's a game changer maybe this isn't for you but being able to play these games just from whatever device is really nice and of course as you can tell probably the best quality of all of them of all the devices we've tested is probably going to be the PC and I feel like that it has something to do with the size of the wireless card or just like the type of wireless card because yeah this is like a Wi-Fi 6 network card and it's just like it works really well with 5G and it's in the same room the whole rest of it when it comes to Steam Deck I don't feel like it's wireless card is as good as like a PC and the phone is actually probably better than the Steam Deck from what I found um, so it's just it's just interesting to compare all of them as far as like internet connectivity and and whatnot. The one final thing that you should really be aware of is input lag. So when you're playing any of these, you will notice a slight bit of lag. It's not anything crazy, honestly. It's probably anywhere between twenty and fifty milliseconds. But of course, the farther away you go with any of the devices, so i.e. if like your PlayStation is not in the same room as the router, like you're going to notice input light goes up significantly. And when you are not no longer in your house, the input lag is very evident. Like it's still playable, but in some instances it can go as bad as like half a second to a second. But that's only if, like, your significant other is, like, streaming and, like, all the rest of that. Or it's just... Your Wi-Fi is definitely... Your router is definitely being more used than prior. The one last really fun thing that I've also got to make mention about is when you go to Rewast, as I've made mention before, it's able to take inputs from, you know, the PlayStation controller and being able to map it to other controllers or other devices you can do crazy stuff like this okay so that looks good we'll hit apply slot one move the mouse kind of out of the way that's right folks you're seeing this correctly you're seeing gran turismo 7 being played on a pc with a keyboard so yeah that's one of the beautiful things with rewast is being able to edit the inputs from a controller to a keyboard and f yeah for this is not necessarily a great example because the input lag is just absolutely horrendous right now but there are situations where you know again my work has got gigabit ethernet so during work i don't even need to bring a controller i can just play it on my computer with just like the keyboard and it's it's freaking crazy i love it i love it so much so at the end of the day which device do i personally prefer using you know even though that it's probably the worst quality out of the three of them i actually still cannot get over playing gran turismo 7 on the steam deck i am eagerly awaiting the day that it is finally released on steam but for the meantime i mean the quality is decent enough that the frame rate is stable enough and being able to just kind of like tab out and then shoot you know open up another game it's just it's just awesome where it feels like that everything that i've got is all in one console so it's just it's spectacular i, I absolutely love using the steam deck and that being said, I actually find that using the PC honestly is really not ba that bad either because with, you know, the gigabit Ethernet at work, the quality is unparalleled. It almost, almost in most cases feels like that I'm just directly paying off this PlayStation 5. Of course, there is the obvious input lag and every now and again, you'll get some artifact in when the router is really being used and the video stream isn't quite as consistent as before. 
but I mean, it's just, it's really cool. Again, playing on a keyboard, if anything else. So last but not least, that leaves the phone. You know, it's, it's great. And I know a lot of people would actually use it. I've, I mean, shoot, if I didn't have the Steam Deck, I'd only be using the phone at this point. But between just this cheap controller that's priced way too high because of the licensing and just also to probably claw back some money from the app development and whatnot. I mean, it just, it's not quite there. There are too, there's one too many inconveniences involved where just at that point you, you start looking other places for a slightly better experience. And I think at the end of the day, I probably will return this just to get my hundred bucks back because a hundred bucks for that thing is just not worth it. But again, that's not, that's not me telling people do not go buy it. I'm not everybody. So some people's needs are different than others. I mean, being able to spend the amount of money on the Steam Deck for the SSD upgrade and the micro SD, you know, the one or two terabyte in the bottom there, which just makes that thing worth way, way more than it should be worth. So, I mean, the Backbone is a good product for those who are on a tighter budget. It's not for me, though. And that's more or less the point that I'm trying to you know point out all in all what do you guys think if you've you know let me know if you've used playstation remote play before down in the comments or if you have other experiences let me know how your guys's experience with doing remote play on the playstation 4 tried setting that up before where i was actually trying to stream a playstation 5 and play on the 4 uh i just it, it got to a little bit weird for me <laughs> so yeah let me know your guys's experiences with it if you have any critiques or criticisms over even this review let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this content make sure to like comment and subscribe we've probably got a couple more product reviews coming up in the future but that being said i hope you guys really enjoyed this content and we'll see you guys next week so again thanks so much and i hope you guys have a good one take care bye